Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist here to talk about abscessed teeth. What is an abscessed tooth? How do you know if you have one? And if you don't have one, how do you prevent it? And if you do have one, how do you get rid of it? And if you don't get rid of it, can it potentially kill you? So first things first, what is it? So every tooth has a living functional nerve and blood vessels that run down the center of the root. This nerve is responsible for feeding your tooth structure and keeping it alive. But if that nerve or tissue supply is somehow compromised or infected, you'll get something we call a periapical abscess. Periapical abscesses are the most commonly talked about dental abscesses. However, there are other types of dental abscesses which aren't directly related to the nerve of the tooth. Gingival abscesses and periodontal abscesses. Those abscesses are the ones where the infection is strictly localized in inside of your gum tissue and the bone tissue and not the tooth itself. And the fluid might drain out of the gums when pressure is applied. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking more about the most common type of dental abscess, the periapical abscess. This is the one that most people are talking about when they say, I have an abscess tooth. This is the one that forms as a result of an infected or dying tooth nerve with a developing cyst at the tip of the tooth root, which confusingly enough, cysts ultimately drain through the gums and into the mouth as well. So although you might see fistulas, small, pimple-like sores on the gum tissue, that doesn't always mean that it's a gum abscess. It could be a periapical tooth abscess that's spilling out onto your gums. What other symptoms might you notice with an abscess? Well, depending on the type of abscess, early stages of infection may include tooth sensitivity, tooth pain, tooth decay, cracked teeth, an enlarged nerve on your dental x-ray, darkening around the roots of your tooth as seen on your dental x-ray, and the later stages of infection are often related to things like having a bad taste in your mouth, visible pus draining from somewhere around your tooth, like we were just talking about. The tooth might move when pressure is applied, it might feel loose. The tooth may start to darken, discolor. A fistula, the pimple on the gums may appear right next to the tooth root, and you might have swollen or red gum tissues at that area as well. But the big thing, the big clue that will tell you whether or not you have a periapical abscess is what shows up on your dental x-ray. Periapical x-rays will show you if there is a cyst around the root of the infected tooth. If there is, there you have it. But back to the symptoms. It's extremely common for abscess abscess symptoms to come and go. So you'll have visible symptoms for a few days and then they are gone the next few days or weeks, which isn't good because lots of people think when the symptoms go away, they are in the clear, but that's not the case. The tooth itself didn't heal. The pain will come back. So if you've ever had tooth pain and it went away and you're like, oh good, I'm all good now. No, make sure you visit your dentist and tell them about the type of pain you experienced. So then they can check and confirm there isn't an abscess forming on one of your teeth. Don't wait until the pain comes back because delaying care, even if you don't have symptoms anymore, delaying going to the dentist will only compound the progression of the disease, making the abscess, the infection worse and limiting your treatment options and potentially leading to, in extremely rare and advanced cases, an untreated abscess can cause a life-threatening infection if it spreads and reaches your brain. So technically, yes, a dental abscess can lead to death and we don't want that. So let's talk about how to prevent that. The thing about abscesses is that they are often preventable. We can prevent all that scary stuff from happening because untreated tooth decay is the most common cause of periapical abscesses. So if you have a cavity and you need a filling and you're putting off getting that filling, allowing that small cavity to grow and get larger and larger until it enters the nerve of your tooth, infecting your tooth, that is what most commonly will give you an abscess. Tooth decay, simple cavities, they spread. And although untreated tooth decay is the number one cause of periapical abscesses, deep cracks in the teeth can also contribute to an abscess tooth nerve. For instance, if a traumatic injury during an athletic event or car accident involved trauma to the mouth, it could fracture the tooth and allow bacteria to enter the nerve chamber as well. Either way, prevention is key. Routine dental exams and cleanings and proper home care of brushing and flossing will help eliminate the cause and progression of dental abscesses by preventing tooth decay in cavities. And for abscesses caused by cracked teeth, in those scenarios, it's best to wear a mouth guard, a protective mouth guard during sports. And consider wearing a night guard when you go to bed if you tend to clench or grind your teeth at night. By the way, mouth guards and night guards are different. Don't wear the same one for bed and for sports. I have a video all about that. And lastly, before we go, let's say you do have an abscess tooth. What are your treatment options? The only way to save an abscess tooth is with endodontic therapy, a root canal. If you don't get the root canal, the only other option is to extract the tooth, remove the tooth, pull the tooth because it's infected and it's dying and it's only a matter of time before it's not salvageable. And don't forget, the longer you wait, sure, you might notice the pain starting to go away, but that's probably because the nerve of the tooth is starting to die, taking the pain receptors right along with it. It won't get better. It will only get worse. And if you've ever heard someone say their abscess tooth healed on its own or they took antibiotics and it went away. No, 
Abscesses do not go away on their own. Like we just said, the pain might come and go and the pain receptors might start dying. So you won't feel it anymore, but the abscess stays and antibiotics won't get rid of it either. Antibiotics can help reduce inflammation and the level of bacteria in the tooth. So your dentist can comfortably numb the tooth to remove the infection during your root canal appointment. Sometimes your dentist will prescribe antibiotics for an abscess tooth, but it's important to understand that antibiotics are in addition to getting a root canal. They are not replacing the need of a root canal. If you have an infected abscess tooth, the only way to save it is with that root canal where they manually go in and remove the infection. I do have a bunch of root canal videos. If you'd like to learn more about them, I'll link all those videos of mine in the description box below. I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe and turn on your notifications if it did. If you want more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com and hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. Peace, love, and teeth.